All right, you're set. It is seven o'clock. We will call to order this regular board meeting of the Palmyra Eagle Area School District. Tracy, may we have a roll call, please? Carrie Ellis? Here. Justin Thomas? Here. Tara Bullman? Here. Scott Hoff? Here. Corey Jones? Here. Matt Mecca? Michael Eddy? Here. With six members in attendance, we have a quorum this evening. The mission statement of the Palmyra Eagle Area School District is to ensure that students excel with intellect and virtue, inspired by innovative educators who engage and challenge each individual. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, the agenda this evening as presented in front of everyone, um, unless anybody has anything, we don't have anything for closed. Oh, we don't? No, so we can strike that from the agenda as far as I'm concerned. Okay, yeah. Do you have something for closed? Yeah, are we good? All right, so we'll strike Motion that. To strike I move. Closed yeah. from the Second. I'll second it. Okay, so we'll strike item 15 from the agenda and we will go on. All those in favor of the agenda as amended, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Public comment. Mr. Gordhammer, anything you'd like to say this afternoon? <laughs> no? You're good? <laughs> that, I'm glad you're here. No problem. All right. Board monitoring, Ms. Tim. All right, I think I can set it down there. I'm loud. It'll work. Um, I think this really started because Steve gets all my emails and saw the survey and was like, why don't you come talk to the board about this? So I did share this presentation with you guys today. Um, I'm going to go over a couple kind of highlights quickly. So we, as a staff, decided to do kind of a culture survey. Um, I'll be honest, part kind of due to our situation, part just kind of as an SEL, social emotional learning focus. So a little bit about why. Um, again, 712 homerooms is what we did. So we intended and attempted to survey every kid. Um, that link will take you to all of the questions that we asked. All of them really dealt with student-staff relationships, school environment, peer interactions, kind of how they deal with struggles, how they deal with difficulty, um, really trying to give the kids some tools and some things moving forward to utilize. Um, from there, I spent the first in-service day, my staff and I went through the results and kind of looked for trends that we saw. Uh, we also did a short answer part. You'll see those questions on the bottom. So we looked through that data. We looked for trends in grade levels, kind of is there something going on with one grade versus another? And then we had some homerooms to follow up, dig into it a little bit more, and talk about kind of what we've seen. So what the numbers truly mean, so one of the things I needed to do was put faces of children to the numbers. So in total, 284 kids took the survey. We have 317 kids in the building. Um, kids gone. I'll be honest, I didn't shove it down everybody's throat. I did eliminate a handful of answers that were clearly just no, 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 no every time, and I did it in a minute. Um, but for the most part, 90% of the kids took it. So one of the questions everybody asked me is, when looking at the chart, what does a percentage mean? So we equated it to a quarter, so 25% is about 70 kids. So when you're looking through here, you can kind of visualize, okay, 70 kids said this, 70 kids said that. So I had my staff look at it, and I wanted to share three reactions from them with you guys. The first one is the one that staff was most surprised by. This was also the one um, that we have really tried to dig into the most, and I'll kind of explain why. So the pie chart shows you um, the, the student answers. So we did never as read, which kind of makes sense. So again, here you're at 18.6% of the kids, and the question was, I know I matter to people at my school. 
And then we did sometimes as the kind of orange color, um, often is the blue, and then always is the green. So one of the things we did was we broke it into a positive and a negative, putting the sometimes and never as kind of your more negative spin, your often and your always as your more positive. I don't know that it's that clean cut in their eyes, but it gave us some kind of nice data to look at. So I think when you look at the positive and negative, you get really quickly why this was one that staff was really surprised by. We pride ourselves on, on showing that we care for kids, that they matter to us. Um, so we really struggled with this one. There's a real easy answer why. What's the word that's a problem in this question? People. So who is people? As you look through the other ones, you'll see we were really specific to teachers. Um, and this one says people. So that really is the problem. So when we followed up with the kids, we found out in a lot of worlds you're thinking about their peers here. Still good data, but as a staff, I think if we thought about that, we wouldn't have probably been beating ourselves up as much. But it's one that we are focusing on kind of as we move forward. Um, the second one was what they were most proud of. Um, I'll be honest, when I wrote this question, I did not think this is the kind of responses I would get. So the question for this one is, I feel my, re -teacher, my teachers are respectful towards me, and the never is almost nothing. So that was something that they really, really um, felt proud of, were really happy about. You can see the often is almost 50%. That's awesome. What we found out if you look through the whole results is they don't equate being respectful to trusting us or thinking we care about them, which is kind of a weird dynamic, um, and that's something that we're trying to work on. It's great that they think we're respectful of them and we have that relationship, but trying to translate that back into kind of a little more of that human connection. And then we followed up and just talked about how do you know that? How do you see that? What does that look like? And then we spun it the other way as far as what does it look like when staff are respectful of you? What does it look like when they're appreciative of you? Those types of things. The last one was the one they found most difficult. And again, here's that care aspect. So this one, again, now I'm asking my teachers care about me. And you can see we have a pretty dramatically different result. 50%, 53% positive, 46% negative. So again, they don't make that connection between care and respect. The other thing we're finding as we're talking to them is if I say to Joel, or I say Natalie, who's not sitting here, Natalie, why didn't you do your homework? They immediately think, well, you don't care about me because you're giving me that negative feedback. So trying to kind of build up their resiliency that criticism isn't always meaning that we don't care. Sometimes we ask because we do care why you didn't do your homework and why you didn't do well on something. Um, so again, positive and negative, looking through, trying to look at some of that data. So then kind of trends, and we did notice some pretty big things. First thing, again, that respect and care thing, that really rings through a lot. In the short answer, we talked a lot about staff inconsistency, whether it be hoods or homework or how quickly you put things in Skyward, which you all are parents, so you understand some of that, how quickly you grade things, how you do some of that. And we as a staff have to own some of that. If we are frustrating them with our inconsistencies, that explains some of kind of what's going on with them. The other thing we noticed kind of across the board, um, and if you have ninth graders, which Tara does, I, I tried to kind of start to address this this week. Uh, the ninth graders in general were lower in everything, and we just kind of made the realization, what do we know about the ninth graders? Well, there should be 25 more of them, and, and they're struggling with some things. They're struggling with some connections. They're struggling kind of with some transitions. So I met with them last week, tried to just kind of uncover the elephant in the room, and. Let's talk about it. And then, you know, I basically told them, in 27 weeks, you're going to be sophomores. Nobody else is going to be a sophomore in 27 weeks but you guys. Like, we have to kind of work together and figure it out. So continuing to work with that. And I think that was really eye-opening for the staff to think, oh, that's kind of why they are a little snarky and a little difficult at times and, and some of that. And not to make excuses, but to understand why. Um... The last thing, I think. So what are we going to do with it? Because that's the question. You can't take data and not do anything with it. So again, we're doing homerooms to kind of dig into it. Really trying to work on some of those soft skills, some of those coping mechanisms. We're going to be working on that a lot. Trying to increase positive interactions with staff, even though I think we do a great job of that. We're not hitting every kid every day, and we know that. So trying to look for those kids we're missing. Trying to look for those kids that you struggle to make connections with, but Joel can. Trying to kind of build that up. 
Um, really, we're working on doing some, some fun things. As you probably all know, we're doing our, our Friendsgiving. You're all invited to that. Um, really just trying to create some moments for them that are enjoyable in what at times can be kind of a difficult situation right now, but, but working through that. The full survey results are there. I'm definitely not going to go through all of them because that would take forever. But for all of them, you'll see the same thing. Um, you'll see the chart, if it loads up. You'll see what the question was. You'll see the grade level breakdown if you're really interested in data. This is the average by grade level, and then you'll see that positive and negative in there. Um, in a true data format, we're going to give the same survey three times. As much as I'd like to change my people question, it will skew my data. Um, but for the most part, we're going to ask all the same questions middle of the year and then the end of the year. The other thing that's a big plus for me, if you look through, was the um, highest response rate one, the way you wanted it, was do you feel safe at school? And that was overwhelmingly yes, that, that we do feel safe at school. So that was something um, that was good as well. The only other thing, really not related to this, but I know state report card came out, and you guys have obviously seen that. Um, I know there was some social media buzz about the high school one. It is up, and it's fantastic. I just want to make you aware that this is the first year they counted growth in the high school state report card. So if you look at it, there's a growth number. They used ACT Aspire finally and tried to show how those kids are, are growing through. So that helped us, which is a good thing because they're, they're improving and they're growing, but that's data that wasn't in the high school in the past. And that's the same for everybody. So that's kind of a point as you're looking at it. Questions on survey or state report card or life at the high school? Um, I guess I didn't realize, um, and it's kind of sad, but the extent to which the topic is still being talked about as to what school they're going to go to. The, um, I, I mean, I'll be honest of that, and I don't think there's any reason to hide about it. One of the short answer questions we asked the kids was, how does the current situation at PEASD impact you? And a lot of that is kind of that, I, want, I don't know where I'm going to go next year. I don't know what's going to happen, you know, that type of thing. And I think we, we walk a fine line between not knowing true answers, because none of us do, but also wanting to support them to the best that we can. You know, so when we get an answer in, in January or wherever it is, you know, at that point, we will move forward in whatever capacity we have to for the kids. If that's planning for life next year, here, that's what we'll do. If it's not, you know, we're going to be honest in, in the fact of you're going here, let's sit down and make sure you have what you need and you are where you're supposed to go. It is, it's definitely still a conversation. I don't know if it's a daily conversation, but it's, Well, and it's it much is. so from um, Samantha's standpoint, you know, <clears throat> she's, you know, she was all for one school and then, you know, some more of her friends are going to another school and, you know, now she's, you know, totally flipped to where she's actually considering Whitewater, which was a definite no. And I'm just like, why? Let's just focus on now. And I don't know, I mean, I, I don't know that, you know, when the teachers talk to me, a lot of those are happening you know, during work time, they'll walk by and hear this or that. But it's not, as much as I think staff would like to try and talk about it, there's really, I've told them there's no, you're not going to say anything that isn't going to get twisted the wrong way or right. be misconstrued right. or whatever. So that's why really trying to focus on helping them build relationships, helping them have those soft skills, those coping skills. It, I'll be honest, it's kind of our behind the scenes way of supporting them in what is a difficult time right now, you know. Do you have, um, do you, any, you guys have wind of a lot of people leaving at half semester at semester break. No, but I'll be honest; they could leave tomorrow, and they don't tell me. I'm, I'm sometimes the last one to know who's doing what. Yeah. So, because that's I, that's what I'm hearing. Quite a few, quite a few are leaving at semester. Break. Yeah, it's, and I it's don't know a, how they can't. How can they do that? Because the, the open enrollment hasn't opened up. Can always apply under the exception. <clears throat> Anybody else? Mr. Hoff? Just thanks for keeping the wheels on. Yes. We're trying. I mean, Best you, we can every day. You've, you've 
not getting enough, gotten enough credit in all six years of me sitting in this chair. You've been outstanding, and and I can't say thank you enough for what you do for my kids and all the other kids here. You are the unsung hero of this place. Wow. So thank I'll, you for that, and congratulations. The report card was great. Yep. It's exactly what we talked about year after year. This is why changes happened mm -hmm. five years ago, mm -hmm. and this is why this is you can't turn a ship around that quickly. It takes a while. It takes, it takes, it takes time, and it takes takes levels of kids getting through things. Yep. So congratulations on that. And the that. middle school yeah. is up almost two full points, even though we're still yeah, struggling but, there. I'm happy with two full but, points there. But you yeah. can't go up 10 points without going up two nope. first. So nope. so that's it. And, and again, Good thanks, for, thanks for keeping the wheels on, and, and thanks to Joel for stepping into rather unique roles this year. And, and uh, you guys have been great, so thanks. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, um, administrators' report. Carol, you got anything tonight? No. no? no. Okay, sounds good. Joel, anything? You're good. All right, just checking. All right, uh, consent agenda handled as a singular motion and vote. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve consent agenda. Second. Any questions about any items on the consent agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor of the consent agenda as presented, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Action items are blank this evening. That, I believe, is a first. Yeah. All right. District Administrator's Report you will find in your packet. Dr. Bloom is home recovering from shoulder surgery. Wish We wish him our best. Um, announcements and comments? Anybody got anything? No? No? All good? Congratulations to the whole cast and crew of the musical. It was a lot of fun to watch. Mrs. Taylor did a bang-up job, as always. So thank you for that. Um, next regular board meeting, Tuesday, the 7th of December. Um, you've all gotten the information. I'm sorry. That's 7, the December 10th. I apologize. Um, Next school district boundary appeal board is this coming Thursday in Eagle. I will not be present at that one. I have to work, so anybody who wants to is fine. It is uh, by invitation staff members to open, and then it's open mic night after that. You'll see on the agenda that was sent out today, they did change the end time on it. So, so the last time it was 6.30 to 9.30 period, um, there was a lot of quiet time at, at the way, second end of it. So now it's 6.30 to 8.30 or 15 minutes after the last speaker. So they don't have to sit here from the miles that they've driven to talk amongst themselves. Um, so that would be that. And then the following week is what has been proposed as 30-minute presentations by each of the seven surrounding districts. Um, so that could take three and a half hours of that meeting, depending on who shows up. And then the last one that's scheduled is open mic night, the whole night um, from there. And then after that, they are, they've held the dates, but they are pending. So they haven't set anything in stone. Um, the, to give you an update, the, the 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock meeting the other day when they did kind of the introduction for this board member or these this group, um, they can decide the whole decision. The decisions have to be made by January 15th, but they can be made earlier than that, and they can may be made in pieces. So they could decide earlier, dissolve or don't dissolve, and then follow up with that of how things go. So it can happen in phases or all at once, depending. And they basically said they will have as many meetings as necessary to get it done. All meetings, though, are um, open meetings. They can't have, there's no closed session with any of them. Mm. Okay? That's pretty much what they covered during that meeting. So, was there anything else that I missed, Carol? Mm -hmm. You were sitting there. Okay. All right. I thought you did a fabulous job. I did too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we, we all as a group, and, and I can't say enough of how great it's been to work with you guys. We all took a pretty good beating that night, and it wasn't, you know, it was what it was, but we, we, 
we, we took a beating t to an extent that I didn't expect. So that's how it goes. Um, all right. So we will now hear a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Have a good night.